But it's, it's a little redo. It's a little uh, control Z that we have in terms of the drawing. That can be kind of handy. Secondarily, too, then you'll have a good clean copy of just the line work that you've done. So that maybe by the, down the way you might need just line work for some kind of a lead behind where you need something small. And it has to shrink down. And, you know, the, when you put gray tones in something like that, it doesn't, it doesn't shrink down and work that well. Because maybe you want to do a little, like, page of lead behinds of storyboards. And or um, even put one on a business card, which once again you're going to end up with a drawing that's that big that's going to come down to that size. If there's all kinds of gray tone in there, it would muddy up too much and you wouldn't have it. But if you had copies once again digitally, whether it's a Xerox or even scanning it or something like that, you're going to then have maybe some other uses uses for it down the way. And you just never know what shape your portfolio will be down the way. What kind of you know because myself, people ask me, can you do this kind of work? Can you do that kind of work? And before I did a storyboard professionally for somebody, I'd never done one before. Can you do that? Sure. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it was just drawing anyway, you know. You know it's very easy, actually, because I never took a storyboard class. No one gave me the opportunity. You know, you know I was in, in the office, someone, Kevin, you, do, you, do, you can do storyboards. Good, do it. Okay. And, and it's, that's, it's, it's actually just as simple as that, you know. Uh, but something that, that works pretty well for me is, you know, and, and I'm an artist. I work with paintbrushes all the time. A paintbrush works pretty well for me, okay. The markers, these, these things, once again, work pretty well for me. Um, take my suggestion to heart, Xeroxes is a good idea because if you mess up, and it's really easy, you know, there's no control Z with the markers, you know, when you mess up, if you mess up. You know, you could have another one to try it again. Or better yet, just let me play. Um, something I do, uh, or I have done in the past, on the small scale ones, I actually make Xerox is the, the actual size of the small scale one. And then I've actually used a color, uh, color markers um, with the small tip. And because on the small scale, I can sit there and I can zap in, this is a blue sky, this is a green ground, this is, this is brown, this is something. On just a small size, in a matter of like, like three or four minutes, I can, I can color in a whole panel, you know, that big, and think to myself, I like that color scheme, or what the hell was I thinking? You know, I'm sure that will happen, you know. And, and actually been able to, you know, I don't like that, make another Xerox of my page, do another color scheme totally different and go, well, now that'll work a little bit better. You know, that can, that can work a little bit better. So it kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of figure some things out. Really. And I also have some of those little cheapy markers that you get at Walmart, you know, where there's the, the little, I don't know, they're not the, this kind. They're, you know, $1.99 for like, like, like 150 of them. You know, those, you've seen those markers that for kids, mm -hmm. they're all yeah. just color. You know, especially for that little comp, little sketchy stuff, you can use those. You know, they're usually water-based, so they will, if you touch them with your finger, they'll, especially, they'll kind of come back and haunt you. You know, you've got to watch out for that. But I, you know, I've gotten cleaner and better in my old age. I can, I can stay away from it somewhat. So. But that, you know, that's that's a that's actually pretty good line quality. Um, William, on a, several occasions, he's said, Kevin, what do you think of this? And I've, I've, I've made him miserable because I've talk, spoken the words line quality to him several times. Uh, and it'll take several more times before he'll ever get it. You know. Um, <laughs> you just got to, you know, and, and it's only because, because you're trying to be marketable. You know, you're trying to do work that someone's going to say, ooh, she knows what she's doing. Or he can, he can handle this project. No problem. You know, you're trying to look professional. Um, real quick, with a brush, and this is something taught to me. I had this guy named Carlin. I don't remember his first name. George was not his name. Mm -hmm. It's Dirk Carlin, and he was he, he was like 75 years old when I was a student. Okay, he was a really old guy, and and he did this most beautiful line work in the world. And he did use this pen. This is the kind of pens he would use. Um, everything he did was like, you know, all of his professional work that is was something like this. Very fine line work. Um, I wish I could find some of his pieces. But there was something he had shown me, and, and he was working, 
he told me he had a bottle of ink. He, you know, remember, he's like 80 years old, 90 years old, whatever. And he had this bottle of ink that he got in like 1955. And a ream of paper, he said, which is a, you know, big, big pieces of paper. And that was like all the materials he's used in the last like 40 years. And, and, and he, was, he would talk about like getting a project in from somebody. And they'd say, can we have this? This is Monday morning. This is a rush job. You've got to have it done by Friday. And say, OK. And he looked like Norman Rockwell. He really did look a little like Norman Rockwell. And so he'd like, it had to be done on Friday. So at like noon on Friday, he'd take out his bottle of ink and his pen, and he'd get a piece of paper out, and he'd just do whatever. <coughs> and he'd roll it up, he'd get on the subway, deliver it by 1.30, and they loved him. You know? And I can't do what he did, but you know. But he was, he would, um, he was adamant. He'd kind of talk about like, if you were doing a line, you know, and a lot of us, we draw lines like this. <coughs> Trying to draw a line down the paper, you know. And I'm trying to draw that line, and I don't know. It just looks like crap, you know. It's not quite working for me, you know. <coughs> and and something that, that Mr. Carlin had shown me was if I want to draw a line, is like you hold your hand steady, and you just move your body. draw one line because he showed me this one drawing that he did where you know the, the start of the drawing was this one line that just kind of curved down the piece and everything bridged off the one line you know and it was amazing because here is you get this big blank piece of paper and he actually knew where to put that one first line or he worked it out somehow up here before the magic moment happened but you want to try and think to myself, you know, and it's akin to when you're drawing the bones for my anatomy class or something like that and I've got a I've got a, a uh, a phalange or a metacarpal or something like that. And the one edge of this metacarpal is a bump like this. And then the next part of it goes sort of like that. Because it's a curved piece of equipment. And then the bottom end of it goes like this and wraps under. And then the other part's going to come back. bit more of a box shape. But instead of drawing a line that goes this direction, notice, I mean, I was just drawing, trying to draw one line, you know, like that, not doing this, you know, and leaving it all fuzzy and unsure, you know, to try to get yourself to build that confidence to draw, figure out where I'm going to begin, where I'm going to end, and then try to draw that one <coughs> line where it belongs, not, you know, not try to work it out as you go along. This is something I'll show you guys over and over again in other classes, and I get a little redundant about it, but just being able to do that simple trick is just a, you know, and that's a bad line to begin with right now, but just to do that simple of a trick is, is something that can be marketable. I mean, that's, just, that's kind of say it all the time. I've been able to make some kind of a living doing this kind of work just because I can do just that much, as simple as that sounds, you know, is, is you know, has been a way to get from here to there without getting in trouble with anybody. Who's this? That's wills. These are wills. Well, you scanned the boxes, didn't you? I see the bit mapping. Don't use Photoshop. Use Illustrator. Especially for the big ones, because the word that word dialogue will kind of turn into a mess in Photoshop. Get all funny and weird and crazy. Secondarily, too, by the way, when you when you when you are scanning something, if that scanner door isn't held down like a rock, really solid and flat, you get yeah, you get kind of air bubbles or something like that in there or whatever. And what that ends up is getting you shadows and things like that in the scan. If you use flash for your animation at all and you scan it, you'll find out you're going to be spending like way too many hours cleaning up your drawings. In, in the computer later on because the scanner didn't hold this, this, the material down.